The next map we'll discuss in detail is the source map. So this is much like the channel map, where it can be accessed through the whole workflow of the channel. However, the source map is read-only. Mostly. I'll explain on this later. This is because the source connector injects values into the source map when it receives the message. This is useful for knowing where the message came from, so you can use those variables to filter or process a message. Let's look at a few properties that some source connectors set the source map variables to, and I'll also leave a link with all of the source maps I've found for different connectors and processes. So first we have the TCP listener. The TCP listener stores the local address, which is the port that received this message, and in most cases will be the Mirth instance IP. And then the local port, which is the port that received this message. And then the remote address, which is the IP that sent the message. And last, the remote port, which is the port where the message was sent from. So let's go into Mirth and look at some of these. So if I go to the response map channel group and go to our three channels we had before, we can go into the second channel and look at the messages. So from here, we can see the source connector and the mappings. And this channel receives messages from the port 6702. And that's the local port we have right here. And the local address is from my machine, which is 127.0.0.1. And then we sent these messages from Mirth, and Mirth assigned a report when it sent these messages. And that port was 49399. I didn't set this, but that's just what Mirth sent. And then it was sent from the same address, so this is my Mirth instance. Now typically this would be a client IP. Next we have the HTTP listener, and the HTTP listener stores the remote address, just like the TCP listener, remote port, local address, local port, and then the method, so this would be get, post, put, or any of the other HTTP methods, the URL, which is the URL it sent the message over on, the URI, which is everything in the endpoint except for the domain name and port, and then the protocol, so the HTTP protocol used to query the endpoint, the query, and this would be any query parameters that were used while making the API call as a string, and then the context path, which is just the path after the domain name and port, but before the query parameters, the headers, which is any headers used in making the call, and parameters, which is the query parameters as an object so we can pull them out easier. So let's go into Mirth and look at the HTTP listener and look at the source maps that it set. So I have this HTTP listener channel. So if I send messages using Postman, we can see the messages and the different source maps. So this channel uses port 6735 with the context path as patient slash request. And then I'm adding a few query parameters in here. So let's send this. So now let's go back to Mirth and look at the message. So click on the message, and now we can see all these source maps that it set. And you can see that it was a local port it used, the method, which was git, the query parameters, which was patient ID 1234, and first name John, the remote port, the context path, the URI, which is the context path and the query parameters, the URL, which is without the query parameters, protocol, local address, the parameters as an object, and then the remote address. Now let's go back to Postman. And what if I don't send these query parameters? So we'll take those off and send. Now let's go back into Mirth. And for this message, we can see that the query parameters are off. So no query and no parameters. The last source map variables I'll discuss in this lesson is a channel reader. And the channel reader sets the source channel ID, where the message came from, and the source message ID, which is what the message ID in that channel is. So this is what the source channel ID's source message is. So let's look at an example in Mirth. So I've got these two channels, channel reader incoming and channel reader outgoing. So if I send a message in through channel reader outgoing, it's going to send to channel reader incoming. So let's go ahead and send a message. 
process message. And we can see that it was sent to this channel ID, which is our incoming channel. So if we go back, we go in this incoming channel, we can click on this message, and we go to the mappings, we can see that it came from 27D1C33B, and the source message ID was 2. So if we go to the channels, we can see that outgoing is 27D1C33B, so that's correct. And if we go to the outgoing, look at the message, it's ID2. Now additionally using the channel writer, we can specify different source maps to add to the outgoing message. This is why it's mostly read-only, because you can't edit the maps when they're attached to the message, but you can add them to the map using the channel writer. So let's look at this example with a channel reader outgoing. So I'm in my channel reader outgoing, and I can go down to this message metadata. So I can add a few entries to this first one. We'll label it patient ID. And the second one we'll label first name. And the third one we'll label last name. Now these are the mapping names. So I'll need to set a mapping within this transformer to pull out those values within HL7. So I'll go to my transformer and I'll add a message template here. And then we can go to PID2.1. I'll map to variable. We don't want to do an iterator, so no. And I'll label this just like I labeled the channel writer metadata. So patient ID. And then I'll go over to the patient's name. We'll go to the last name. Map that to the variable. And I'll do last name. And then we'll do the first name. Now we'll go back to channel. So now this should pick up the patient ID, first name, and last name. So we'll save and deploy. So now if I go into my channel reader outgoing and send a message, and we'll give it an ID of 1234, process message, if we go to the destination, we'll see the channel, last name, first name, patient ID, that's all good. If we go to sent, it sent these map variables, so patient ID, first name, and last name. And it sent it to the, our incoming channel reader. So we go to the dashboard, we go to incoming, we should see that new message. Now we should see some more mapping variables. So we got the first name, last name, and patient ID, and they're all set to what they should be. Now any reprocess messages will be stored within a source map. And the source map values for the reprocessed messages are reprocessed. So this is if the message is actually being reprocessed, which is most likely true, and also replaced. So this is if the message is being overwritten or it's copying the message and sending it as a new message instead. So let's go back to our channel writer and reprocess a message and see how these source maps are being set. So if I was going in here and reprocessing a message, I can right click, reprocess message, and I can choose to overwrite the existing message and update statistics or not. So let's just first send this in as a new message. So it's a new message. And we can see here that we have a source map with replaced, which is false, and reprocess, which is true. Now if we go to overwrite the message, And send that through. And we can see that it updated it to replaced, which is true, and reprocessed, which is true. Next, we have a slightly more advanced topic, but I think it's important to go over. Now, each source connector sets their own values into the source map. However, there's a source map variable that they all set, and that's the destination set. 
You can think of the destination set variable as what destinations is the message going to be sent to and processed through the destinations filter, transformer, and connector. If we edit this destination set variable, then it can prevent the message from being sent to a certain destination, which could help on Mert's database usage. Especially if you have a lot of destinations that are being filtered, and the message should only be sent to one or a few destinations. Now we can edit this destination set variable by using the destination set filter in the source transformer, or by using JavaScript and setting the destination set that way. So let's look at example. So I've got this channel labeled destination set example. We've got a few destinations in here. One for client A, one for client B, and one for client A and B, one for client C, one for client D, and then one for client XYZ. So if I go into these filters, we can see that it's looking at MSH6.1, and if it matches client A, then it's going to be processed through the destination. If we go back to client B, we can see that it's the same location, except the different MSH6.1 value. And if we go to client A and B, we can see that it's both of those. And then client C has client C, client D is just client D, client XYZ is client XYZ. So without the destination set filtering, then it's going to try to send to each one of these destinations before it hits the filter. And that can clutter up the database and add more storage space than what we really need to use. So let's just go through an example. So we'll deploy this channel. And then destination set example, we'll send in a message. And we'll make the MSH6 value client A process. And then you can see that it's only sent to client A and client A and B destinations. Now if we send in another one, we have it be client C. It's only being sent to client C destination. So each one of these rows stores a record in the database because it's actually metadata that's being stored. We don't really need that. So if we go back to the channel, we can see in the source transformer, I've set a few transformers. So first is the client variable. So we're just using this so we can see the different MSH6 values. And when we view a message, then next I have the JavaScript destination set. So I'm using the JavaScript to do this. Alternatively, you could add a new step and do the destination set filter and set your properties here. But we'll just use the JavaScript destination set right now. So for this, I'm adding the client, the MSH6.1 value, and then I'm going through a, a few if statements. So if client equals client A, then we want to process to client A and client A and B destination. And similarly, if we want to process client B, then we want to send it to client B destination and client A and B destination. Client C just sends a client C, client D just sends a client D, Client XYZ sends XYZ. And now I'm using this destination set and using the method remove all except the array that we're setting the destinations to process to. Now there's a few methods you can use within here. So if I click destination set dot, then you see that you can use just the remove, which is the destination name or the ID of the destination. And then you can also do an array, or you can remove all of them, or you can remove all except just a destination, or you can remove all except an array of destinations. So let's go in here, and we'll actually enable this transformer. We'll save our changes, deploy, and let's see what we get back now for each one of those messages. So we'll copy this message. So this message is client C. So what we should see is only client C destination is being used. There you go. It removed all of the other destinations except for client C. 
So now if we do a client A, so then what this should do is send a client A destination and the client A and B destination. There you go. And similarly, if we do a client B, then that should send a client B destination and client A and B destination. There you go. Hey, I hope you're enjoying the lessons. Make sure to leave me a like, subscribe, and check out my Udemy courses for more in-depth videos.